So today I'm going to show you how to take an ordinary printer, fill it up with some sublimation ink so that you can make a cute little sublimation t-shirt. So cool. sponsored by Hippo and they're nice enough to give me all the stuff to do this so first you just need a printer there's like a list of printers that this works with but you need one with this little cartridges things that you can fill up with ink so cool so that's what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some of the Hippo sublimation ink and in this box it comes with syringes and ooh, that little sneaky guy that's where it went I thought I lost it and gloves and three you want three I'm like we need four and I found it I didn't show, but it took me forever to find that. But anyways, so all you do is you take out the little needle part, put it on the syringe, and then you have your four inks. I'm gonna start with black, don't drink or inhale, and just fill her on up. Fill up that syringe. It's easier if you hold the bottle upside down, but I wanted to do that for the shot. And then, oh, made a little mess. Let's clean that up real quick. And once you have it, the syringe full, you just poke it on in and empty out that syringe and it will start filling up the little ink cartridges. You have to use a syringe cause, cause on your normal like re ink refill things they have like a signature tip. So start filling it on up and see here. I also thought it was cool if I like pushed in, it'd create a little vacuum and then I wouldn't even have to touch it and it'd fill up. Whoa, magic. I don't know why, but I love that so much. So it does take like a couple different times to like fill it up but slowly but surely we got it nice and filled up and here's a little trick if you held it upside down then you don't really get any air bubbles and you can get a, a clean pole nice and just poke it on in and do that with all four colors c y m k black yellow magenta cyan i believe that's what they stand for and you always want to check your ink levels make sure it's nice and full so with that we're good to go but before I move on, I wanted to clean out these syringes because I will be using them again later. And so I just got a little cup of water and filled up the thing with water and kind of did it to all four. And just try to rinse it out the best I could. It would be easier if I had did this like on a faucet. But then you can pull it apart and kind of wash them a little bit better and then set them aside. So you use a heat press to get the image onto the shirt. And it works best on things with polyester. It's like 100% polyester. So you just get it, make sure it's nice and smooth, get your image. And there's like different instructions on how long and how hot you need to press it depending on what the thing is. So got it nice and pressed. Steamy. Wow. Mr. Nick. The difference between sublimation and like screen printing is the sublimation is in the shirt. It like dyes the actual fabric. Where screen printing in most other ways, the image sits on top of the fabric. So ideally you could put an image across the entire t-shirt here. So I just measured out it's about four papers wide and three long and just threw it up onto the computer door, made little squares the size of paper, and then scaled it to size, and filled it, and then just started printing out different sections of this image. So we brought back the printer, and a little test print. It looks like it's gonna work, it looks pretty good. So we're just gonna go ahead and print them all off. Nicolas Cage, I once was gonna do a podcast where I watch every single Nicolas Cage movie, and then like, talked about it. I started it. Didn't finish it. Maybe I'll start it up again with my sister. Could be fun. So, then I just pieced it together and found out that I was missing one. That one. Cool. So, just hurried and printed that off and got them all together. And now I'm going to cut off all the little white bleed edges of the paper. And I have to do that on every single one. I didn't really want to do that on screen, so I just did it off screen real quick. Plop. So the idea is that I want to make one like giant image. So I'm just going to start piecing together. I got some tape and put it on the back side of one of them. And I started with the top of the image because that's kind of where people are going to look first. And if it's I work, oh, got a phone call. Bruh, they have no idea. They have no idea what you guys are saying. Okay, bye, love you, bye, love you, bye, love you, bye, love you. So like I was saying, I started the top of the image because I can kind of get it lined up better there and then as I worked my way down 
still look good there's like some spots that weren't as great but I don't think you're gonna notice so here is the transferred instructions so yeah 360 for 25 seconds with heavy pressure and my thought here is that if I get my shirt and just lay it on there and then kind of iron it on or like heat press it on with this little heat press guy and just go all across it that should work there was like some little spots that weren't like looking like they were working so I did come in with my iron and started doing more of it and took a little peek and uh, you could see like an iron print right there and the whole thing just uh, was not working out too hot so I needed something that would give out like consistent pressure and do like the homage at once so I printed it out again taped it up and I thought that if I cut each individual square out then I could do it one square at a time and also would get rid of any like overlap and hopefully that would make it look cleaner so I just cut it all apart we can do one square at a time dun, 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 dun. that's not a song is that a song I don't know so heat press oh and I actually put down some like protective thing because it's gonna overlap I pressed it first to get out all the wrinkles give me a little flat image and I put it on there see where it like kind of goes over the collar that's why I have the protection thing pressed it and cool looking good so now I just have to move up the shirt and line up that bottom one perfectly I put down some tape and the... oh yeah I mean yeah kind of worked so just did it and I, I if I was more patient maybe that would work but I think having just one big image is going to be the best bet. So I did it once again, I put it together, and I was just going to lay the shirt on and then tape it down so it doesn't move. That's kind of the idea. Come back here and then just put the shirt and the paper down and then just press it in different areas. Bing, bong, boop, bing, and done. So what does a void squeegee mean? Um, anyways, so I just took it off and we're going to come take a look and see how it did. Just have to rip off all that tape, and then hopefully on the back side we'll, we'll oh, there, oh, there, there you go. But yeah, hopefully on the back side we'll have a nice clean image of the whole thing. <laughs> I was nervous. So with that all taken apart, let's see. Ooh, so you can see where I printed it. Oh, and also that's backwards. So you need to mirror the image before you print it, but we'll just do it in video editing and make it look right. I also changed the image to kind of match the color better, but I think to do this you kind of just need a bigger heat press so you can heat press the image all at once, or just a smaller shirt. So just proof of concept, and yeah, that would work. This was also on cotton, and so it did still work on cotton, but it's not as vibrant. I also tried one of this shirt that was partly polyester, and it was just such a soft shirt, so cool. So there you go. Hippo's actually doing a giveaway for that Epson printer and some ink and some sublimation paper. So if you want to win those, you can go ahead and check the link in my description. So cool. All right, so be sure to like and subscribe. Go ahead and hit that bell notification and yeah. If you want to be a schmoody pie and uh, get your name on my video here at the end, just go to my website.